The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX as we usually do. We started out looking at the uh, daily chart, and then we're going to follow it up right now by looking at it on the smaller 15-minute uh, chart. You can see the patterns are very similar to what we see in our market. Uh, sometimes they go the opposite direction, but that's uh, neither here nor there. Now, today at the break, at the half-hour break, uh, Dr. Steve Shapiro is going to join us to talk about old times and one of the questions that someone posed to me today was, what was some of the major turning points uh, in my trading life? And uh, I, I think, one well, one of them for sure was Dr. Ruth Miller back in 1986. But again, in 1988, uh, I was speaking in Chicago at the money conference and uh, one of my students from Switzerland, uh, Marcus Nix and his uh, partner, uh, uh, oh, what was his name? Oh, Matt Helm, 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 Helmland, Helmlock or something like that. Matt was his first name. Came running up to me and he says, you've got to go in and listen to this guy talk. He said he really uses Fibonacci numbers, you know, really great. And so I went in, I walked into the back of the room. There were about 150 people there. And uh, Bryce saw me. He, he evidently knew who I was from a picture or seen me in the hall or something. And he, he yelled at me and he said, uh, hey, why don't you come down here and learn something? He said, Larry Pesaveno's here. And everybody started laughing. So I walked down and I sat down in the first row. And he's a very charismatic person, uh, on the on the uh, just like uh, Crocodile Dundee. And so uh, I started listening to him, and, and about 10 minutes into it, my eyes were so wide, I I just couldn't believe it. And he spoke for about two hours, and he was showing his Wave Trader program that showed how these patterns fit together and how these things you know line up. And then he had them on a scale of one to 10. In other words, if the market hit a 10, that meant that all the cycles and all the patterns were lined up. And whenever a 10 came up, there was a high probability of the market, uh, you know, turning over. So I listened to that for a while. When we finished, I walked out and, uh, you know, walked out and I chatted with him a little bit. And I said, what are your plans here? He said, well, I was going to do a little touring here in the United States. I thought I might go to California. I says, why don't you come to California and stay with me? I said, I've got a you know trading house there in Pismo Beach. Uh, Jim Twentyman lives there, but uh, you know Jim uh, is not uh, against having a guest. So we've got uh, you know a really nice place. It sits over the Pacific Ocean, and uh, you know you can visit us with us. And he said, well, I think I'll do that. And so he did. He came out. And uh, what was really strange was uh, he came out and I picked him up at the San. Uh, I was going to pick him up at the L.A. airport because I had to go down there and see my daughter. And he and I said I'll pick you up there. He said no, no. He said I've got to go buy a car. I said what, what do you mean you got to go buy a car? He said I'm going to the L.A. auto auction and I'm going to buy a car and I'm going to drive it around until I don't need it anymore. Then I'll sell it and make a profit and go home. I said you really feel strong. He said that's my business. He said I know automobiles. He said that's how I paid my bills for many years. He said I would come the United States and buy exotic cars like Mustangs and Cobras and, uh, you know, not Cobras, but, uh, you know, you know, the old classic cars and stuff. And he said, I could sell them. And he said, I was very good at that. So I don't have to rent a car and I can make a profit on it. He certainly did that. He stayed with me for from 88 through 94. He was there at least three to six months every year. And had a great deal of fun with him, but uh, he he was really really very eccentric. Some of the fun things that I uh, what what he did what what he did and showed me was how the relationships I understood. I understood the uh, easily the 618 and 786 and 382 and all all of that. But what Bryce showed me was how 1.27 and 1.414 
uh, fit together to line up these patterns so that you get a lot of multiple numbers coming together. And when I saw that, I just just literally, it just changed uh, the way I looked at things. And in fact, I, I've always mentioned every time I've had Bryce in the office, uh, I'd never had a losing day because uh, we were running the things on the wave trader and I was able to see what was going on. Now, when Bob Miner would come up to visit us, he's an ex another Robert Miner, uh, he's an Elliott Wave guy. Before he met Bryce, Bob Miner was, again, aficionado and very good at it. He did a great job. But after he met Bryce, he started to do his work with the thing that now has become the Dynamic Trader, which is a small offshoot of what the uh, trade uh, Wave Trader program was. But I, don't, I haven't seen anything as good as the Wave Trader program. The problem is uh, Bryce in poor health now, and he doesn't really follow through with, uh, from what I've heard, some of those things. So we'll see. Uh, what's going on. Some of my fun stories and what Steve are coming on today, I, I think he was in the room when it happened because Bryce lived with Steve and his, his mom, Mumsy, for a couple of weeks uh, once when there was, uh, we had a whole bunch of guests uh, at the uh, uh, at the trading house, and we, it was filled for a couple of weeks. And while he was here, he had come in early. And uh, so he stayed with Steve and Mumsy for a couple of weeks. And so we were in there trading, and uh, he, didn't have an, he didn't have an account because you couldn't have a commodity account being from Australia. So I let him trade out of my account. And so he was in there trying to trade bonds and uh, trying to trade bonds. Boy, that's the understatement of the year. Uh, and he said, let's sell some bonds here. He said, I put a stop. At, I'm going to sell them at 10903 free and I want to put a stop at 10904 and I said that's ridiculous I said you can't put an order in like that he said put the order in I said okay so how many you want to do he said I want to do eight I said so I sold him eight these bonds 10103 and it took like an hour and a half for them to get filled they would hit 0102 102 102 a pop at 103 but no trade and then they went up to 103 and stuck there for about 10 minutes, and we were finally filled, and it backed off to 102, 101, somewhere around in there. And he was getting ready to go to play golf, and I asked him, uh, I said, you know, I said, that's a pretty tight stop. And I, as I recall, Steve was there with me, and he said, look, he said, if those bonds hit 10904, I'm going to take all of my books and I'm going to go down to that pier right here by the house. I'm going to throw all those books into the Pacific Ocean and I'm going to drive down to L.A. and I'm going to buy a few cars and I'm going to go back to uh, Australia, never to be seen again. And I said, you've got to be kidding. I said, you really feel that strongly about that? And he said, yeah. So anyway, I put the thing on. He was getting in his car. Mr. Z, it was beyond my comprehension, too, and I hope Dr. Steve remembers it because when he, we, I'm going to ask him because I think he was in the room because, as I recall, I don't remember exactly but where we were. We were at the top of the hill or the bottom of the hill. I don't remember. Uh, but we'll ask him. But that's just the way he was. So I asked him, I said, uh, tell me why he said it's beyond it's beyond what 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 you would be able to understand. And I said, come on. And and, and he never did tell me. And uh, I think I figured it out. It's related to 1.618, but I'm not sure. Well, anyway, the, the 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 funny part of that story is he was getting ready to go play golf with a couple of my doctor friends, and uh, he was in the. Uh, driveway and we were on the second floor and uh, he yelled up and he said where are the bonds trading and i said hey they've had a pretty good break here i said they're, they're down about a half a point and he said let's book it and i said that's what you want to do and he said yeah book it so i booked his uh, two thousand dollars and i'll tell you what happened when we get back from the break 877-927-6648 If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I'll finish up the story. Anyway, uh, Bryce said cover the short bonds, and I did, and he booked $2,000. And as he was driving away, and as he was driving away, about uh, a quarter of a mile up the road was the stop sign to turn to head to uh, Pacific Coast Highway 101 to take him up to San Luis Obispo Country Club, where he was playing golf. Bonds dropped another full point. They were down a point and a half in about, oh, my God, and there was no report. They just dropped. And uh, so that night, uh, I, of course, I lived in San Luis Obispo, and so that night we all met at our usual haunt, which was Jocko's Steakhouse there in Napomo, California, the best steak place in the world. And there were about seven of us there, and Bryce came in, and he said, dinner's on me. He said, I had a great day in the bonds. And Steve was, I think, I'm pretty sure Steve was sitting next to me, and he just looked at me, and, of course, he picked up the check and everything. I never said a word because I was afraid that, you know, he would turn white. And anyway, the next morning, he came in, and now bonds were down three full points. They dropped two the first day and another point the next day, uh, and uh, that was it. No, Nothing more was was ever said about it. But I'll tell you just a few stories about him. I, you know, he taught me so much uh, just by looking at these markets. Boy, when he when he came up with an idea, boy, you better pay attention to it because he flat out knew uh, what he was doing. But uh, anyway, he, he, when we were having a seminar in uh, Los Angeles. And uh, Rich Anderson was there. There were 16 people that had come in to uh, trade with us for two days. Uh, they paid it quite a bit. I think it was $3,500, but it was guaranteed. They had to make money uh, on the on the two trade. There was trading. We were trading live. It was on a, like a Thursday, Friday, and uh, so I was there Wednesday, all ready to go and everything. And I get a call uh, about uh, one o'clock in the morning.
from uh, uh, Bryce's friend Gary, who is from the UK, uh, from Australia, but lived in the, the Marina del Rey there. And he said, hey, man, he said, the mate's dead. And I says, what do you mean? He says, Bryce, he says he wrapped his car around a telephone pole. He's deader than a doornail. And I, I said, oh, you got to be kidding me. He said, nah. He said, he's gone. And he hangs up the phone. And it's like one o'clock in the morning. I said, oh, my God, I got to do this thing myself. I said, I'm worried about Bryce, how to tell his uh, his ex-wife and his kids. I called I called Rich, but I couldn't get, get through to him. And so the next morning, I got down there real early. We were starting like at 6 o'clock. I was down there about 5.30, and I was getting everything. A few people came in, and I was telling him, I said, we have a problem. And I told him, you know, what had happened and everything. And so we would start the training at 6 o'clock. About 5 to 6, in comes Bryce Gilmore. And, and everybody's, ooh, what's happened? And they said, what's wrong? And I said, well, Gary called me at 1 o'clock in the morning and told me you'd wrapped your car around a telephone pole and was dead. He says, ah, he said, that guy hasn't told the truth since 1938 or something like that. I don't remember what the date was. But anyway, that was one of the things that I had to, to live through. Another one was in Chicago. We were doing a seminar with uh, uh, Mark Douglas. And uh, we had about 20 people, and a couple of the hockey players from 1980 team uh, were there then, and we had a really great time with them. We'd been out, and it was uh, we went to a really f a famous place there in Chicago, Gene and Giorgetti's, and uh, we bought oh my gosh, I don't know how much money we spent. It was I think the bill was over three grand, yeah, way over three grand as I recall. And uh, one of the things that uh, Bryce did is he had yeah he was a king of the practical jokers, that's for sure. He uh, they had these beautiful uh, sterling silver knife sets. They were like 400 bucks a piece. And he bought a set for everybody at the seminar. I mean, I just, uh, that's just how eccentric he was. But uh, he's, he had been in several big accidents over his time, uh, auto accidents, because he drove extremely fast. And uh, one of them, he lost his eye eyesight, but he was still playing golf and relatively doing pretty good. And then a few years ago, he had a really bad experience uh, with another auto accident that caused almost a loss of his other eye. So he's pretty much, he can't drive anymore. And uh, he he's still living in Queensland. Uh, and he's had trouble with a couple of family things that didn't work out the way that he wanted them. But uh, boy, the guy's really smart. He's uh, He really knows geometry and all that stuff. We were able to meet uh, Clarice uh, Garrett the uh, wife of uh, William Garrett, who wrote Torque Analysis, uh, bought Bryce Love. That was one of the things that it, uh, what was, I forget what, it was 90, 92. He woke me up at like uh, 11 o'clock at night because I had sent him a copy of page 89 out of Garrett's book. And it was basically Fibonacci spirals and expanded all the way out to pi. And uh, he said, where'd you get this? Diagram. I said, I, well, out of Garrett's book. And he said, I, I want to see the book. And I said, OK. I said, uh, I'll send you a copy. He said, no, I want to see it tomorrow. I said, well, the only way you're going to see it tomorrow is if I go over to the university and, you know, uh, print out the copies. And this is before we had the, f the fancy stuff, folks. And uh, so it was, uh, what, 287 pages. And he said, I want it today. So I went up to the university, left about 1 o'clock in the morning, had it copied and faxed to him so that he could have the whole thing. Oh, it must have been eight, nine hours later, he calls me back and he said, I'm on my way to uh, California. And I said, uh, why? Uh, you weren't supposed to come for another month. He said, well, he said, I called Hawaii. He said, I found out that, uh, you know, Clarice Garrett was still alive. I called her and she told me about her husband and what he had studied and stuff. And that uh, his book collection was given to the University of Hawaii and it was stolen within one week, every single book that was there. And she said, I want to just know more about the man. And he said, I've invited her to come to California and uh, visit her brother who lived in Fresno. So she's going to spend a day with us in Pismo Beach. And I said, well, sounds good to me. And so we met uh, Miss Garrett and she told us that her husband never traded. He worked for Walston and Company. He was a good friend of none other than Ross Perot. And uh, he basically handled, he was from a uh, family of Iowa farmers, third generation. And uh, it certainly was a, you know, a real pleasure meeting her and everything. But uh, he never really traded. All he did was uh, clip, uh, you know, bond coupons and stuff like that. But he really, stu they really uh, he studied the market. That's all she ever did, much like what W.D. Gann did. Now, 
I don't study it as much as I used to because, you know, first of all, some of these guys are so smart. It's really, uh, I have never led a boring life. That's for sure, dude. Uh, I've been very fortunate over these years to meet so many people that uh, have been so, uh, so much fun. And you're going to meet one of them here in a little bit. Steve Shapiro is one of my really dear friends. He's always had my back as I have had his, and he's just a super guy. And I was very, very close to he and his mom very much. Okay. We got a call here from New Jersey. It's me, Larry. Hey, Doc, don't be so right. modest. You're a pretty smart hey. guy yourself. Nah, nah, nah. We got, we got to pay a few bills here. You know, we got commercial <laughs> time coming up. Hey, Steve, do you remember? I don't know if you were in the room or not. You were there the day when uh, Bryce sold those bonds at 103 and said they would never get to 103.1 or something like that. Do you remember that? Yeah, Bryce was he, amazing. The, the yeah, uh, program that he, he worked out was really terrific. Yeah. He said if those bonds get to 10301, he said, I'm going to take these books out and throw them in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, listen, what we're going to do is pay a few bills here. We're going to come back and then tell the folks, uh, you know, how we met and all that stuff. So I can't okay, even remember sure. some of it. It's been 33 years ago. Can you believe that? Oh uh, no, no. Yeah, I'm not I guess that old. Actually, yeah, thirty-four years old. Yeah, we only you're only you're only forty-nine. You were ten when I met you. We'll be right back with Dr. Steve, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, we're back, and we are going to walk down memory lane with my good friend, Dr. Steve Shapiro. Doc, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, let's go yeah. back to uh, uh, Shell Beach in the apartment where we first oh, yeah. met, I believe. Uh, you came up to start watching me trade. You want to tell the folks some of your memories we had, uh, and sure. then we'll probably expand on Bryce and uh, Mark Douglas and, you know, some because you were involved with especially Dennis Regan. You know, with the uh, with the artificial oh, yeah. intelligence, because you the you the dude that that started the whole thing. Go ahead, Steve. Tell us what you remember. Well, I re I remember you would always say, "Take what the market gives, not what you're looking for," and that's that really was a, a big help to me. It stayed with me, and uh, uh, I remember one thing in particular. I made a trade. I was trading um, crude oil. I wound up the trade in 26 seconds because I followed our patterns that we were looking at, and the market was moving. Something happened in the news, made the market really take off. And I, the market is – the trend is your friend, so I got into the market, and in about 10 seconds, there was a, something like a $400 trade uh, profit. So I decided that uh, take what's there. I wanted to get out of the trade, and by the time I uh, got my finger on the, uh, the button to get out of the trade, it had it dropped down to $150 profit. Total elapsed time when I called, because I was curious, was 26 seconds. If I had waited <laughs> 10 more seconds, it would have been negative. So that was the best evidence that I saw of taking what the market gives. Not what well, you want. Take what's that's there. That's for sure. So that was fun sitting next to you in trading. And I remember the, in the beginning, I remember sitting next to you, and I think you were trading pork bellies, and you were you, you oh, were yeah. looking at the charts, and you um, you uh, um, you made ten uh, ten or twelve consecutive trades, trades that you would have made, and you just pointed out, and I w would ask you, I said, why would why did you do that? And your answer was, do you remember? It's the right thing to do. That was before yeah, right. I had yeah. uh, really studied the patterns uh, yeah. that you had shown me, and mm -hmm. the Fibonacci patterns always uh, seemed to work to a greater or lesser degree. Yeah, yeah, they certainly, they certainly did. 100% of the time, all the time, but yeah. uh, I, I think it was fair to say that in 75% of the, of the times I traded, there was some profit yeah. in the in the trade. It was just a matter of uh, yeah. being smart enough to take it. You were you were with me when we were in that pork belly contest that I ended up winning at the Merck. They had a pork belly trader yeah. contest, and uh, we, we did some of that. Uh, Steve, one thing I do remember uh, that we chat about once in a while is the one trade I did after uh, being on the phone with my ex, if you remember that. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah you, you want to and, tell the uh, folks well, a little bit about my short, short and calls? He said, yeah. <laughs> You you uh, made a trade. You said it was a bad trade. I said, well, what are you going to do? You said, I'm going to get rid of it. And the, the uh, moral of that story is, if you're not feeling well, don't trade. Yeah, that's right. It was it certainly affected me, that's for sure. Uh, part of the time, folks, uh, when we had students come in, they would go down to Steve and his uh, mom, uh, Mumsy title mom, and Mumsy oh, yeah. would always make breakfast for us. I, do you remember the the, uh, the heart heart surgeon from New Orleans that came out to visit us all three or four times? Yeah, he said the dog was going to die. Yeah, yeah. It was, what kind of dog was uh, the, the sultan? What was he? He was a chihuahua he was or something? A Oh, Pomeranian. Anyway, he, the, the dog was about two, was he about two pounds? Uh, yeah. About six pounds. Yeah, about six pounds. And, it, and I think yeah. it, was, yeah, it was Dr. Stone. Dr. Stone said that's the only dog you ever see that could eat half his weight in bacon. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and the little guy could really put it away, that's for sure. That that dog extended your mom's life about, uh, oh, my goodness, uh, oh, probably six or seven years, I would think. She lived to be 97, didn't she? Ten, she died 10 days before her 96th birthday. Wow, me. I remember I used to, on Friday, I used to do the newsletter, and every Friday I would take her down to Santa Maria where we had the fairgrounds, and they had off track betting there, so we would play the horses on Friday so I could write the Astro Cycles newsletter. And on one day, you know, we always sat at the same table at the back. I was up talking to someone, and I came back, and one of the old timers came up and was trying to put some moves on your mom. And I walked up to him, and just jokingly, I said, Hey, get your own girl. And the guy ran out of the place. 
Just she never did forget that. She lived on well, that trip. Well, you don't know how much that meant to her. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that was really funny. She she was really sweet. Steve, tell me how you met Dennis Reagan because he's the one that started me in artificial intelligence. You would uh, get faxes. You got you sent me up a fax. You brought a fax up the hill yeah. from your house up the hill, and that was back in uh, forget the number. But how did you how did you meet him? Actually, um, he, he he made some um, uh, mailings. He sent out uh, uh, recommendations and said, "Try them and see if they work." And that was how I followed. I I didn't make the trades, but I followed some of his recommendations, and they seemed to work. So yeah. that's how uh, it all started. Yeah, in, in seeing what he was uh, he was doing, and I was, uh, wrote to him and said, "I'd like to know a little bit more about what you're doing." And that's how we got started on the artificial intelligence. Yeah. You never went to Bakersfield with me to meet him, did you? I don't think you no. ever did, did you? No, yeah, sorry, I know I Dr. Did, but Dr. I did Dr. Jimmy Dr. Jimmy went over a couple times. Also, uh, do you remember Steve when we first started working with Bryce and the Wave Wave Trader? Uh, oh, how yes. much oh my god. Tell the folks about that. That was that was really cool. Well he developed a developed a program that was able to chart the phases of the moon, and uh, it, it really worked beautifully. And what I did, uh, I used that chart. I checked all of the grains, and as a consequence of, of laying that chart over a, a weed chart, there seemed to be a reasonable correlation. So I did some back research, got data from Jim Toyman, and uh, it seemed like there definitely was a correlation. So that's when I wrote the program. Yeah. Not a, it wasn't really a program. It was just a technique for trading the moon, uh, trading wheat using yeah. phases of the moon. There were two trades a month on the new moon and the full moon. And I remember starting uh, at the, uh, um, of the January 6th of that year and made 12 consecutive trades uh, that were profitable on, on the 13th yeah. trade. Uh, if I would have done what I should have done, it it would have been profitable too. In terms, I think uh, at that time, the cost to trade week was about six hundred dollars per contract. I don't know what it is now, but I know it's a lot more. Yeah. And I made three thousand dollars in uh, uh, yeah. one month out of those yeah. twelve trades. Yeah, you still and you I still, you, and you still uh, follow when it. I left you, California to come back yeah. east to accept the, the teaching position, I was still trading. Um, and it works. It still works today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It doesn't work during the summer months for some reason, mm -hmm. but 10 months out of the 12 months of the year, it's very, very accurate. And I don't know why it only works with wheat. And I thought this was really a great thing to do, and then I find out that people have been trading uh, using phases of the moon for 100 years, only yeah. wheat. Yeah, I know some people certainly do do that. Uh, do you remember some of the great meals we had down at Jocko Steakhouse? Hey, Jake, could you stay with us uh, uh, for just a little bit longer, Steve? Sure, sure. We're going to pay a few bills. We'll be right back with Steve Shapiro. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with my good friend, Steve Shapiro. Steve, uh, what was the name of the bar there that uh, John Madden owed? You know, the football coach at San oh, Luis yeah. Obispo? Yeah. What was I it? Do you remember, remember it? The, the bottom of the hill. It. So long ago. I can't either. It was. It was where the bikers used to hang out. And yeah. I tell. I. They, you ask about. They were asking about some of the funny things that happened. I remember sitting there oh, okay. about. I got. I got one for you. Do you remember Bruno? Oh sure, Bruno. Yeah, Bruno Libertori. My God, tell tell the yeah. story about. And let me let me start. Bruno was one of my students, and I had he would come in, and usually students stayed two days with me, and we would trade up at the trading house. We'd go down have uh, breakfast with Mumsy and Steve, and then we would trade. And he stayed with me the whole week. He was really having a hard time. He was a plumber from Connecticut, and I worked with him all week. And finally, at the end of the week, I said, Bruno, I said, just you know, I, my hands are tied. I said, I just I'm just not getting through to you, so. So, you know, try it for a little bit. And if you if you can't do it over the next few weeks, you know, let me know and I'll send you your money back. And so I I left and Monday morning I came in and about 830 Steve and Bruno came in and I looked around. I because see you took him to the airport, but you ended up going to your house, didn't you? And he stayed with you. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, he, and finally, uh, you know, Bruno started. Go ahead. You got it from there, Steve. What happened? Because yeah. it was well, it was I a surprise. Uh, because he wanted to trade uh, the S&P, but he could not trade it well. He kept losing money. I said, uh, why don't you try it our way? He said, I don't trade that way. I said, do you make money? He said, no. I said, why don't you try it our way? And he just couldn't get it. I said, Bruno, let, let's try it another way. Do you like girls? He said, oh, yeah, I like girls. I said, imagine something. This is this will explain harmony of the markets to you. Imagine, imagine that every morning at eight o'clock, at eight o'clock, a beautiful blonde in a flashy red convertible passes by your house as you're getting ready to go to work. If she did this ten days in a row, you don't know where she's coming from. You don't know where she's going. Would you be willing to say there was a high probability that she might? Be willing to do it when he let them say. He said, "Oh yeah." I said, "That's all harmony of the markets is. It's percentages. With something, <laughs> something that has gone before will happen again, just like uh, the beautiful blonde." Oh, is it that all there is to it? Duh. <laughs> That's how he learned to trade yeah. this and pay. 
Yeah, and then the sequel to that is about oh, 15 years later. I'm sitting here in here in Tucson, and I hear this uh, real expensive car pull up into my driveway, and I go out and look, and there's Bruno sitting in a beautiful yellow Porsche convertible on his way to California. He had his own little fund where he only traded corn. You remember, Steve? That's all he ever yes. traded was corn. Yes, I yeah, that. yeah, and he did uh, he did really good. So I never heard from him after that, but uh, it was certainly uh, certainly great. Hey, Steve, I want to thank you for joining us today. We'll have you. Hey, sure. by the way, if the, if the folks want to reach you to talk about that wheat, how would they reach you? Uh, just you call you at your number or something or what yeah, would you, email, yeah. email or you, what? What would be best? You can give my number. It's okay. I, I don't mind. If they want to talk okay. to me, I'd be happy to talk to anybody. Okay. Okay, I'll put the number in the room there, and if they want to take a look, it's uh, his number is 609-702-9643. No, 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 9346. 9346. That's what happens Correct. when you're dyslexic. It's 9346. 609 702 9346. Yes. Steve, thanks for joining us, buddy, and I'll talk to you always next week pleasure, like we Larry. always do. You bet, brother. I love you. Take it easy, and I hope to see you when we're in Philadelphia. When are you, by the okay. way, when are you coming to Philly? That, uh, way, the way things are going, who knows? <laughs> Probably <laughs> maybe Christmas time, I'm hoping, but we'll have okay. to wait and see. Okay. Okay. See thanks for later. joining us, pal. You bet. Okay, Bye -bye. folks, you bet. All right, let's move on and talk about the markets a little bit. Uh, we have uh, someone's asked me a question about this big pattern that I'm seeing in the Dow Jones, and it just doesn't want to roll over. Uh, well, that's not because uh, I, I've got I've done something wrong. I, my timing is very you know it's not worked. I mean it just not. But the pattern is still there, folks. There's nothing different about that pattern. I'm going to give you my two cents worth, and then we will see uh, what you think about it, and that we'll not worry about it too much and get it up here and. We'll take a look at it. All I know is for sure, all righty, when this thing is over, you see where it's trading there at right around 27,800, 27,007, whatever it is. You see that low down there in December, December 26? We're going to take that low out. And we're going to do a 1.618 expansion of that low. That's going to take us down to about 17,000. We're going to drop that much. I don't know when it's going to happen, but when it starts, it, the market's going to tell you. It's going to ring the bell and say, uh-oh, there's just too much complacency out there. I don't know what's going to cause it. I believe it's going to be related to the bond market because this – thing is all relying on credit. I don't know if it has anything to do with the terrorist activities that we're seeing in Chile and Spain and uh, France and also in, uh, now in Hong Kong. I'll tell you one thing. If you see people starting to throw Molotov cocktails here in the United States, th th there won't be any prisoners taken. The policemen will shoot them. Someone carrying a Molotov cocktail is like someone carrying a machine gun, folks. Let's get off to the, off to the races and forget about that and move over to the bond market. We want to take a look at that one. Here is the bond market. We've been waiting for this rally. We've now rallied uh, just about three handles. Uh, there was the ABCD pattern. I believe we've got above 58 today. So that tells us that we uh, have at least completed that bottom. Any move below 155 now, folks, after a small rally is going to be extremely, extremely bearish. It really is. Now, let's just look at one other thing that our good friend Byron Tucker sent to us. This is, comes from uh, Statistica out of the Federal Reserve. Let's take a quick look at this. This is the uh, amount of credit that's in the system. We'll get up here and you'll see where the uh, where we're looking at here. You're looking at uh, $13.9 trillion. You can see the, the amount of credit card is really relatively small. Mortgage, of course, it has to be huge. And the home equity line of credit doesn't mean too much. And the student look at the look at the student loan, you know, compared to the automobiles. My goodness, that's just a, that's just an amazing. It tells you that these kids have overpaid for their education. At least that's my uh, natural gas. Natural gas was one of the ones we wanted to look at, and I did a chart. I think I did a chart. The question is. Oh, I don't have the net. All I know is the natural gas uh, last yesterday made that low. We made a 61% retracement last night at uh, 270, and now we're trading a little bit below that. But here's what I wanted to talk to you about because someone asked the question, and I want to. Uh oh, I've got the natural gas here. Sure it is. Let's get it up here. Here we go. We'll get this up here, and you'll be able to see it. Uh, last night's high at uh, 270 was an exact 382 retracement of that high we made. Now, if that's only a two-day rally, 
and the market turned down from there. That is really going to be. Ruby, I don't have time for Sugar the Sweet. I've just been swamped doing everything else, so I have not been able to uh, do that. Is it trading? Is it, is, it, is it going up a little bit? It should be up around 1270, the uh, March Sugar. The last time I checked, it looked like it was heading towards that area. But uh, you know what I'll do? We've got a break here. And when we get back, I'll get up Sugar the Sweet, and I'll put it in there for you, Ruby, because you're always there. Oh, see, there you go. We're almost at 13. Yeah, we're on the right. We're on the right track. So I'll update that chart, and when we get back from the break, I'll be able to uh, be able to take a look at that for sure. Remember, folks, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. It's old pincushion day to see the old get the old tests in order. But we will be back uh, on Monday. We'll have some guests next week. I haven't lined them up yet, but we'll certainly try to get some of the usual people. And we will have David Paul and Tom Hugard on next week, too. But they're in Frankfurt at a big uh, financial meeting. May God bless, and we'll be right back, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, we're going to take a look at sugar for Ruby the Great. Anyway, Ruby, this is working out really good for you, dear. As you can see, we had that three drive to a bottom pattern, and you had a perfect symmetry. You can see that between the lows, it's just absolutely as near perfect as it could get. You had the expansion, then you had the Gartley pullback, and now you're on your way up. I think we're looking at uh, somewhere between 1350 to 1400 in the sugar, and then you'll have another correction. But uh, this has a potential for a big move uh, Ruby because of that triple bottom that three dry pattern that we had there so pay uh, close attention to that and we know some of the markets are starting to hold now with this thing about China and all this other baloney that's going on the grains have held up relatively well uh, keep an eye on the March soybeans folks remember we talked about that early in the week down around that 920 level uh, excuse me around 910 in the uh, March soybeans should be a very nice garley farming and uh, do the work yourself as 21 says and then you'll be able to uh, uh, you know get uh, get it working so that's what we're watching so far I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to Steve it's been a long time. I don't get to see him very often, but uh, and we chat a lot, but I don't get to see him very often. But he's certainly a super guy and a really, really nice guy. He teach, He taught at Drexel University where he went to school. He got a double Ph.D. Then he taught at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo for several years, and uh, that's how I met him. He used to come into the office and trade with us, and he knew everybody, did everything. So it's been around me, been around a, a great time, and I have a lot of, lot of fun times with him and stuff but if you need to reach him I posted that I'll put it in a room here but case he's fun to talk to because he's re pretty much retired now and uh, he does have time to chat he won't uh, chew your ear off or anything but he has some good ideas 702 it's 9643 and there we go so that's what we're looking at right now so that's what we're watching so live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless Wireless.